the quarterback competition that you guys have, have talked about, but what did you see on this one day between the Marcus and, and Brian? I didn't see anything. I was running around like an idiot, to be honest with you. But, uh, you know, I thought, obviously, um, Marcus did a really nice job. Um, I think there was a couple times both those guys forced the ball a little bit, but that's why you have days like this. It's interesting to see how they react. You know, when, when you're behind, do you, you know, do you, we, we obviously talk about all the time that you don't have to make it happen. You have to let it happen. So um, I think it'll be a good learning lesson for both those guys. Uh, you know, it, it was it, it was great that we could get them on a big stage, you know, and play in front of a crowd and, and, and the, kind of see what that atmosphere was really like. So, but uh, I think uh, just standing there as a spectator and what I think, I thought Marcus had a really good day. Um, I thought there were some decisions he could make better. Um, and I, I thought at time Brian did some good things. But the tough thing is when you split yourself into teams is, you know, I think sometimes you're victimized by some drops or some protection things that, you know, we'll look at the tape and kind of see where they are. But um, I, I'm pleased with our quarterbacks. Um, and, I, and I think, you know, obviously lost a kid in Darren, who was the all-time touchdown pass guy here. But um, I, it's not a position that I'm worried about, whether it's Brian or Marcus next year. Where I'm, you know, I'm confident in both those guys, and we got to go play in a game. So. Would it be safe to say that you re you would reiterate again that people shouldn't make too much out of one day? People can do whatever days? they want, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> Just we don't have to do whatever we want. You know, right. it's a big thing for us. And, and again, it's it's April 28th, and we're playing September 1st. So um, both kids did things today they need to learn from, both both positively and negatively. And I think that's what you hope you do. But you know, they they got to come back, and it's it's really those guys running seven on seven and doing all those things in the summertime because you know we're, we're done this is our last day we can be with them from a football standpoint so um they'll have them during the summertime and then we'll, we'll get back i think august 7th or 8th whatever time we get that first practice and we'll get rolling then and you know it'll be neat for us as coaches to see what improvements made over the summer between both those guys and and and, and how do they you know continue to progress because they're both um young guys they, they got a tremendous amount of upside and you know and let's see you know who, who's better when we come back in August, and, and we'll get going from there. So um, it, it's just it, it's the nature of it. I think that's what makes sports great. Everybody can compare and contrast and have an opinion of where we should go and what we should do. But you know, fortunately for all of everybody involved, we, we don't really have to make a decision on who who's going to be our quarterback until we get to you know about a week out before that first game. So. Like between high school and then redshirting last year, Marcus has only had like one competitive season on the field out of the last four. Besides everything you do in practice and the situations you put him in, is there something about him inherently that you know the lights go on on a day like today and he's able to handle it like like he played every game last year? And no, I don't know. I mean, it's the first time I've seen the lights go on with people in the stands with the kids, so um, you're you're happy about that. But you know, yeah, he's never been a. I mean, he's got that Hawaiian Islands just laid back, cool breeze kind of attitude, and uh, it, it helps him. But there's a. There, there are some guys where that's the way they act all the time, no matter what they do. But he, he's got, you know, the one thing about him is, is when he puts it into gear, like he did on that long run, um, he may be thinking like a laid back guy, but he can run a lot faster than a laid back guy. I'll tell you that. So, Chip, a lot of first time players today. Uh, mm -hmm. Eric Armstead, a lot of people thoughts on him. Did, did he, were you able to focus on him at all? I didn't get a chance to really focus on Eric too much. You know, I know in the course of the body of work that we've seen him through the spring is, is uh, there's not a drop off when well, usually when you get a young kid in there you're like oh my god we're running the ball to the left well it's the young kid playing defensive end over there and that's the reason why it's like he fits in you know with Taylor and and uh and Isaac and some of those guys and um he's big he's physical he can run um he's been really really happy about how mature he is you know and just coming here and he's literally uh, he hasn't been he hasn't been on campus more than a month now. I think he got here on April second, and we're on the twenty eighth. So, um, been impressed with him through the totality of the spring, but really didn't focus individually on him today. So, Chip, obviously, Marcus had better stats, and his team put up more points than Brian's team did. Did that have how much did that have to do with the players that were around Marcus and the players that were around Brian? I don't know until I see the film. To be honest with you, I know. I talked to the guys who drafted. You know, I'll go and see how they did in the draft. I think Coach Aliotti's team again, just you know, the savvy draft veterans, Coach Wood and Coach Al. So, but you really don't know until you see the film. I know there are times when you look at Brian. You know, he, he's got the ball right on a guy, but he drops it. You know, and is that the quarterback's fault or is that the receiver's fault? But um, we, we'll grade them to the spring on the totality of what they did all 15 practices. So um, we don't put much. We won't put. You know a whole lot more on what this is obviously this is a different situation because it's more of a game atmosphere but you know it won't be the end all in our decision you know when we come back to next fall and 
you know, one kid's doing this, but you go, hey, way back on April 28th, this guy was the better player on that day, so. Uh, you got a long off season ahead of you now. Could you break down the areas that you feel your team needs to work on? Overall, I think it's developing depth. You know, at certain positions, we, we, um, We've got some good frontline guys. You know, linebackers are great spot like that. You know, with Kiko Alonso, Michael Clay returning. But really, who are those guys that are going to be in the rotation? Because our guys don't play every snap on the defensive side of the ball. Um, offensively, we, we've got some question marks that we still need to get answered at wide receiver. You know, who's going to be able to go along with some of the kids that we got coming back because we graduated some good players. Uh, we lost David Paulson to tight end. You know, where are those snaps going to be distributed? Um, and we got some answers with some kids like Carson coming back, but really didn't go through the spring for us. How does he fit in? But we lost Darren Weems and we lost Mars Asper. So I think at every position, there's there's just one or two, you know. And I think at some positions, the frontline guys you feel real confident in. You know, I'm confident in Deion Jordan and Boseco Lacumbo and Taylor Hart and Clay and Alonzo and all those guys. But who are the other guys? Because our guys don't play every snap defensively. We're going to rotate six linebackers. We're going to rotate 10 defensive linemen, 10 DBs. So, you know, really developing depth at positions where we get guys coming back and then trying to find out there's some big holes, especially, you know, for us at wide receiver, um, trying to find out who's going to play there. And, and at tight end, there are going to be some specific questions. And then really, where's the depth behind? You know, I feel we got two proven running backs in Kenyon and uh, DeAnthony, but where, where's the depth behind them? And I think those will be some question marks as we move forward. So. Uh, speaking about Kenyon Barner, it was his birthday today. I uh, didn't see him get on the field too often. Was there a reason he didn't get too many touches? Uh, do you feel like he has won that starting role as running back? Has he won the starting role at running back? Yeah, I mean, he's obviously our, our number one guy, but our we also have a 1A guy that goes along with him. So, you know, we're going to – you can't be uh, in this league and just have one running back. You need to have some depth there. And, and we've been fortunate, you know, since I've been here to share that load a little bit, whether it was Jeremiah and Jonathan Stewart, and then it was Jeremiah and LeGarrette Vaughn, then it was LeMichael and Kenyon, and that went on for a couple of years here. And now it's who's going to go along with Kenyon. I got a ton of confidence in DeAnthony, um, but it's really developing some depth behind those two. So. Yeah, 